Welcome to a new series in the Adult Education Ministry of Grace United Methodist Church in Winfield, Kansas. In this series, we're going to be digging deeper into the future of the United Methodist Church after the General Conference of 2004, which in my opinion is going to be added to uh, turning points in the history of the United Methodist Church. This series is entitled uh, A New Way for a New Day. And if you don't believe it's a new day, um, just talk to anyone that was at General Conference and you realize that all of a sudden we were dealing with uh, a new day in the life of the church. Um, I want to just recount the history here to put 2024 in context. The first turning point in the history of the church was in 1739 when John Wesley, a priest in the Church of England, decided to start preaching in public places such as parks for the pews and the sanctuaries were empty, but the park benches were filled. This started the Methodist movement within the Church of England. The next turning point was 1784, for it marked the birth of the Methodist Church in the United States. Tory, go home, was the, the cry on the streets of the revolution. This included Church of England, go home. But the Methodist movement stayed, and it became the Methodist Church, founded eight years after 1776. Um, 1840 marked the next turning point, for it marked a decade of this church that was just 60 years old, separated over the issue of slavery. That issue penetrated every church in the United States and it caused the separation of the Methodist Church. A hundred years later is another turning point in 1939 when the North and South Methodist Churches uh, reunited, uh, including the illusion of unity but actually incorporated the value of division within the church by continuing the election of bishops in the former North and South jurisdictions of the church and creating a separate jurisdiction for black membership and leaders. 30 years later was the merger of the Methodist Church and the Evangelical United Methodist Church they had so much in common that they decided let's get together. It also marked the end of the central jurisdiction, a separate jurisdiction for the black members of the Methodist Church, but it also ushered in a journey of the United Methodist Church being the only Protestant denomination committed to global governance rather than being a denomination within the United States. So at General Conference, a vote of a delegate from Angola was equal to a vote of a delegate in the United States. Now, 2024. It will, in my opinion, be marked by the United Methodist who insisted on doctrinal agreement, like-minded membership, independent governance, and exclusion, and denial of rights on the basis of gender and sexual preferences to leave the denomination. 2024 is when those who had those commitments 
were invited to leave. And this separation has allowed the United Methodist Church to clarify that faith is the commitment to follow, be a disciple of Jesus, to strive in all places, situations, be those whose faith is composed of practices of agape love. Empathetic and sacrificial love revealed in the life and teachings of Jesus. That is our clear new identity, a new way for a new day. Now, this faith commitment is in the spirit of a major theme in the life and teachings of Jesus. That's the theme of the kingdom of God. I choose to use reign of God instead of kingdom. When Jesus used the phrase, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, he taught us to pray, thy reign come, thy will be done. Agape love reigning on earth as it is in heaven. You see, the new United Methodist identity is that following Jesus is all about relationships with the divine and with each other, the family of the whole human race. In the reign of God, these relationships are defined by and revealed in practices of agape love. Therefore, in this series, I, I will weekly dig deeper into the identity of the United Methodist Church by exploring each week a practice of our faith. Practices of agape love, which are uh, preached, are taught, and encouraged in the faith communities of the United Methodist Church. We practice our faith. The descriptive words of each week is going to end with the suffix I-N-G. The reason for using words which are uh, ending with this suffix is that in English grammar, the suffix ing takes words which are nouns and makes a noun into a verb. A noun becomes an activity. This is what I refer to as practices. In the United Methodist Church moving forward, we practice our faith. We learn from the life and teachings of Jesus that the life of agape love is defined by actions. Possibly this is a reason for the title of this series, A New Way. Way indicates action, behavior for a new day. And it is a new day. These practices which we would, and into which we're going to dig deeper, are informed by the three simple rules that were defined by Bishop Job in his book by that title. These three simple rules are do good, do no harm, and stay in relationship with God. You see, we've gone through a period of time when I was a part of General Conference when we did some harm, passing judgment on a select group of people. That was doing harm. And you see, these simple rules say, do good, do no harm, and stay in relationship with God. We've got to remember our past. We've fallen short of these three simple rules. We've judged people because they're different. We've often served ourselves to the exclusion of serving others. 
we have often celebrated our own accomplishments in the place of worshiping God. Let me say that again. We have fallen short of these three simple rules. We have judged others only because they're different. We have often served ourselves to the exclusion of serving others. And we have often celebrated our own accomplishments instead of worshiping God. However, in 2024, it's a new day. The United Methodist Church took major steps in eliminating judgmental and harmful language from the Book of Discipline. The General Conference affirmed that there will be unity in following Jesus, a unity which affirms diversity. Yes, we'll remember our past, but we also welcome our future. That future will be marked by turning nouns into verbs, by behaving our beliefs as we practice our faith together. That's our beginning, and for your thought and conversation, first of all, what is the most exciting change you anticipate in the post-2024 United Methodist Church. Secondly, what practices of doing good are for you the marks of faithfulness in the life of your local church? And finally, what's your response to replacing the kingdom of God with the language the reign of God, or the reign of agape love. Welcome to the journey. Thank you.